played uh, the Welsh team and what happened uh, in the wake of it was a massive controversy. The Welsh team uh, had the poppy on their jersey, the Ulster rugby team did not. Q uh, Unionist Outrage, Q um, the Belfast Telegraph uh, playing it up, uh, the newsletter too of course, a uh, debate on social media, Facebook and Twitter. Jim Allister was the loudest voice. He, uh, in, a, in essence, called it reprehensible and demanded that uh, f from now on, that uh, on any other occasion, that uh, rugby be played by Ulster on. I uh, please do share comments, uh, thoughts. Do share them on this and also share on social media by swiping to the right. Uh, Jim Allister said it was premeditated that they knew it was on Remembrance Sunday and basically it was a sop, a sop out. Um, before I go any further, I want to quickly give you a recap or uh, a rundown of the uh, position uh, that I'm coming from. So very quickly, I went to BB growing up, uh, Fishwork Presbyterian. And on Remembrance Sunday, at least once, if not twice, I remember uh, I was asked by the head of the BB at that church to carry the poppy wreath with, uh, I can't be absolutely sure, but if I can rec recollect, it was with a serving veteran. And I stood at the top of the church and walked down the aisle and uh, did a minute silence, laid the wreath at the altar and that was very profound. I probably did not truly underestimate the scale of what sort of role that I was being tasked with in stewarding. Um, with reflection, I'm, I'm quite, quite in awe of it, really. Um, then I went to RBAI, founded by United Irishmen, and every year we had a remembrance service in, on the quad with the whole school. The, the one time of the year, the whole school would come together and you pay your uh, your thoughts, uh, your reverence, and it was a very solemn occasion. So what I want to say is really that I inherited uh, the poppy and my um, appreciation for the poppy and my wearing of the poppy, just as I inherited my religion and just as I inherited my unionism. Then moving on, World War One, how do I see it? Um, it was, uh, of course, an unmitigated disaster. It was horrendous. Young men being sent into hot lead, mowing down thousands in, in, in one day, tens of thousands over weeks and months. It's a horrendous historical event that I look back on with total despair. I do not wish that it happened. I do not wish that anything like that would be ever repeated. But what happened, happened. Many brave men fought and died and gave their life. Many men thought what they were doing was right. And I only think it is uh, proper and uh, honest that we, we don't glorify it, but that we remember. And that we, why we remember it so that it does not happen, happen again. Because as George Bernard Shaw said, the story of history is that we learn nothing from history. So that's, that's my thoughts um, that I've explained poppy for me growing up, I inherited it, and then World War One, which I think was an unmitigated disaster, uh, lions led by donkeys. Then I want to turn quickly to this, uh, the UK and what way I see um, the poppy, the poppy debate and the conversation that's going on. I, I believe in civic unionism, I don't believe in the Ulster the unionism that we see in Northern Ireland. I'm an Irish unionist, I'm someone who again inherited its unionism, but I'm thinking I am examining, I scrutinise, I ask why and I value it. For me, my Britishness is, is, is the BBC. It's a connection with people in GB. Um, it, it, it's a love for the South. It's a want to build relations in the world um, and across these islands. And I believe that this we can have a functioning Ireland, that we can strive to an Ireland that is more united um, and uh, co collective with a collective goal, and that does not diminish the union. Um, but the poppy debate, I think every year, it's so repetitive, 
It's so predictable and really it is toxic, especially typified by what we th saw from Jim Allister. It's this rampant, uh, overbearing authoritarianism that he is demanding and that people prescribe uh, to a, a certain code of conduct, to a certain thought, and that everyone must sign up to and subscribe to this. This, of course, is um, a man who, whose party is basically pre-1997 uh, non-reconstructed DUP, uh, old-style old, old Paisleyism, the party um, that is talking about uh, a freedom of conscience, um, uh, a man who regularly talks about the sovereign, who talks about the glorious revolution, who talks about freedom, who talks about uh, liberties, and of course, um, civic unionism is about a freedom of expression, uh, freedom of thought, a freedom to dress, think, behave, uh, practice a faith, um, go to school, um, to have a family in whatever way you think right, under the rule of law. Um, that's my thought on civic unionism, yes, um, and on the poppy, and yes, I think that the debate, it, if, if someone... Uh, does not agree with um, the past, does not agree um, with what happened um, and finds wearing, the wearing of a poppy improper, that's, that's fine. I, like I said, I subscribe to the wearing of a poppy, unfortunately I'm quite forgetful. I'm not the most, most organised, so I turned up yesterday at uh, the Remembrance Service at City Hall and was I wearing a poppy? No. I forgot it. I kind of wish I had it though. Um, so that that's all I wanted to say uh, in terms of a preface. But so coming to what actually happened, Ulster rugby and Irish rugby. I say this all the time. What we have with rugby on the island of Ireland is something very very special. I don't know anyone else that thinks about it or talks about it the way I do. But I believe that is a package and it is an institution and it's a mindset and culture that has shown the path um, of reconciliation. Let me give an example. Jeremy Davison, who's a Dungannon man, I can only presume a Protestant. He played for um, Dungannon RFC, of course. He played for Ulster, Ireland, and the British Lions. He was forced into retirement after having a suffering knee injury and was fishing, if I can remember correctly. But he talked about when he was playing for Dungannon, obviously uh, in Ulster, in the six counties of Ulster and in a Protestant area in a province that um, that w for which rugby was basically re reserved for, for Protestants, middle class Protestants almost exclusively but not entirely and from Dungannon they would have played in the All-Ireland League even during the Troubles and in the later stages when uh, the ceasefires came along and we worked towards the early stages of the peace process now, he, yeah, you, you know what I mean, um, anyway, he told a story about playing in the All-Ireland League and he, he and his colleagues, his, uh, uh, the, the teammates would have travelled from Dungannon to a team called Young Munster and now that is in Limerick. In, in, in a lot in the centre of a large housing estate, probably uh, comparable to Rathcool. Now, could you imagine a rugby club in the middle of Rathcool? This club, um, Young Monster, has a f fanatical following. Uh, rugby in the south, uh, the south west, is a working class game. It is also for the middle classes, and that's what's very special about it. But just after, um, I, if I can remember well, it was uh, Bloody Sunday. Um, Dungannon were playing uh, Young Munster and they were obviously very aware of the sensitivities. They did not want to hold a minute's silence in, a, in any way that could provoke because of course Bloody Sunday was very divided then. Uh, Unionist Protestants had their reading of events and Nationalist Republicans had their reading. So they staged, um, well that's the way Jeremy put it, they staged um, a minute's silence on the basis of the death of an elder clubman. Now, that shows the, the, the grace, the dignity, the generosity, the magnanimity of those who have overseen and who are stewards and the, the governors of Irish rugby. They know the nuance and the, the delicacies 
of sentiment, north and south. But what, what was great was that the ferocity that, that they met on the pitch was then in the clubhouse with the ordinary members, supporters, was just warmth and accommodation. And I, 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 yeah, well, no, I don't think it has transformed. And this is why I think it's something special because it has always been a unifier. I would almost say that it, what it is, it is, it is a sort of ecosystem of a pre-partition Ireland where there was unionists, never, maybe not unionists, but a, uh, a non-polarized sort of comfortable middle class, moderate class, Protestant and Catholic. Um, so perhaps what I want to close with was, I, 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 I do not know this for sure, but I suspect heavily, because I know certainly for someone like Sammy Morrison has expressed the very passionate views on rugby, how he will not support Irish rugby, how he would only support Irish rugby if there was um, the anthem was God Save the Queen. I suspect he's never played rugby, I suspect he's never really been at a rugby match, yet he is professing very loud, passionate views. He is a, the policy advisor for the TUV, and I guess that the same could be said of Jim Allister. Now, Jim Allister is coming out saying how Ulster rugby should uh, behave, the, the, the practice that sh they should follow and exercise, and the philosophy. Yet, has this man been to rugby? Has he played rugby? Does he know those people who govern and oversee Ulster rugby? Because I, I believe that he has failed to understand the spirit and ethos of rugby, not only in Ulster, six county, nine county Ulster, but also across the island. Because again, what it is, is something very special. So to go over it very quickly, what happened is the, uh, the Ravenhill was turned into Kingspan. There's been a permanent war memorial there, marking the First and Second World War. Um, the redevelopment was staged around the war memorial, so that it is, it is center. It is a centerpiece and a showpiece that no one, nobody can miss it. Also, rugby responding to uh, the almost uh, the hysterics made it very clear that they have an annual service. They also made it very clear, and this is my second point, that whilst the Welsh team had a poppy in their jersey, of course, the English jersey, the English teams did not. And I also suspect that Ulster maybe perhaps do not have the finances to be wearing one jersey singly per game. That is something that happens in the Premiership, but I, um, I do not know for sure. But I suspect that um, Ulster Rugby has jersey maybe for a half season that is shared around or multiple versions. And like I said, I can forget the word poppy. So there's that to consider. There's secondly finances and then of course um, accommodative civic unionism, a type of unionism that could well fall within the remit of the overseers of Ulster Rugby that is not actually necessary to uh, be a very outward patriot. You can be solemn and dignified and pay uh, your respect few, um, and, and f your, your full uh, acknowledgements and solemnity to remember Sunday without actually supporting a poppy and they stood for a minute's silence and followed all other protocols um, including the service at home at the Kingspan. So I don't think I can go on any further. I have laid out where I've come from, uh, my thoughts on the First World War, my thoughts on civic unionism, uh, a quick recap of what happened, Jim Allister's interpretation of it, um, followed with my final concluding argument that I think um, Jim Allister has failed um, and does not understand the nuance of Ulster and Irish rugby and the uniqueness of the, the package. Sorry, I'm just reading some of the comments. Thank you very much um, for the comment. Eamon, I just thought I had to share a few thoughts on this because Rugby is something I grew up with, I inherited it again, and um, it's something very special to me, and I think it has something very special to offer Ireland, North and South. So perhaps I will, I will go on and maybe write something about this. Um, I, will, I will write something about um, this debacle, uh, sort of descended into um, just the, the usual hot-headed, blowhard um, controversy. And I'll leave it to you. Please share this. Uh